Over the next few lessons, we're going to learn more about working with editable poly objects. But first, we need some new objects that we can work on. Think back to the original storyboard that we used for development of this landscape. The first panel of our storyboard contained a hilly landscape with a road and some buildings. There's a reason why we've only worked on the landscape in our scene. And that has to do with 3ds Max's ability to be used as a collaborative development tool. While we've been working on our portion of the overall scene, we have had a second team working on the buildings that will be used to populate the street. 3ds Max has several ways of bringing in files from another Max file. We're going to look at one in particular. We're going to use the Merge tool in order to merge objects into our scene from another 3ds Max file. Imagine this. We're looking at the big picture. So far, we've been working on the landscape while the second team's been working on all the buildings. These are fairly simple buildings because they're going to be seen from a distance. Remember, you always want to work as efficiently as possible. So high resolution buildings really aren't needed and the second team knew that. We're going to merge these 3D buildings into our scene and then do some additional sub-object editing to make some changes to those buildings. We're going to create a window in the front of one of the buildings due to some changes that were made after the storyboard was created. We're going to learn some more about name selection sets during the process. Make sure you have the file chapter 3 road deform 04.max open. If you do not have it already open, it can be found in the chapter 3 folder inside the scenes directory. Click off in space somewhere so you deselect everything in the scene. We don't need to have anything selected right now. What we need to do is some editable poly editing on some buildings. Now we haven't created any buildings and we don't have any in our scene. If you think back to the original storyboard, we had a hilly landscape with a roadway and some buildings. Well, we've developed a landscape in the roadway and a second team has been working on the buildings. We're going to use the File Merge option to merge in these buildings. Click on the Application button. In the drop-down menu, click Import, then click on the Merge option. In the Chapter 3 Datasets directory, we see a file called Chapter3Buildings.max. You can either double-click on it or select it and click the Open button. Instead of opening the file, it gives us a new dialog with a list of all the objects in the scene that we can merge. In this file, there are 11 buildings and one chimney. However, we've decided that we don't need the chimney, and we can always merge it later if we change our minds. In the dialog, only select the objects we want to merge, in this case, Building 1 through Building 11. To highlight these, click Building 1 and drag your mouse down to Building 11. Then click the OK button. This brings the buildings into our scene. They're already in the proper location because the second team knew what our landscape was going to look like. All the objects are automatically selected when they're imported. This is an opportune time to create a name selection set for the buildings. In the main toolbar, click in the name selection set type in area and type in buildings. Then press enter. We've now made a name selection set not of polygons, but of objects in our scene. This will make it easier to select the buildings if we need to manipulate them later. We're only going to work on one building for right now. We're going to put a window in that building. So we're going to select the building first. The way we'll do that is use the Select by Name tool from the main toolbar. In the main toolbar, click Select by Name. That brings up a dialog with all the objects in our scene. Go ahead and click on Building 3 and click OK. That will just select building three in our scene. In order to work better on this building, we'll use a tool called Isolate Selection. We're going to use the keyboard shortcut. It's found in the Tools menu. You can see Isolate Selection. Notice to the right of it, there's a keyboard shortcut, Alt-Q. Press Alt-Q on the keyboard. 
That hides everything but the selected object or selected objects if you have more than one selected. There's also now a warning box that has an option to exit isolation mode. So when we're finished working with this, we can just click that button to exit isolation mode. This makes it much easier to work on individual objects in a complex scene. Now we're going to do a little bit of editing on this building. The building should be selected. Go to the Modify panel. We're going to change the material ID numbers for all the polygons in the building. In this case, click on the Element sub-object level. An element contains all the polygons associated with a single contiguous set of polygons. We navigate to the Polygon Material ID rollout. We see that there's no number next to the set ID parameter. That's because this object was originally created from a box, and a box automatically has six material IDs assigned to it. And the set ID doesn't know which number to show us, so it just shows us a blank window. Click in the type in and type in one, then press enter to accept the value. This will set all the polygons to a material ID of one. As always, exit the sub-object level by clicking on the word Editable Poly. Click on the Exit Isolation Mode to return to the complete model display and press Ctrl-S to save the file.